look at a few more examples of how we can use our normal approximation on a binomial distribution. This example here is a binomial distribution. It says of the members of a bowling league, 10% are widowed. 10% are widowed, 90% are not. If 200 bowling league members are selected at random, find the prob probability that 10 or more will be widowed. So we're going to go back to following our steps. First of all, we're going to check to see if it can be used and then find our mean and standard deviation. So, step one, remember we're going to take our n number in our trial, which is 200, our probability, which is 10%, which means our probability of failure is 90%, and we're just going to multiply them together to see if they're greater than or equal to 5, and they both have to be. 200 times 10 is going to be 20. 200 times 90% is going to be 180. Both greater than 5, we can continue to move forward. Step 2 is where we find our mean and our standard deviation. So our mean is just n times p, which we did right here, which is 20. Our standard deviation Multiply them all together and take the square root. Which works out to approximately 4.24. Now step three, write the problem using probability notation. We want the probability of 10 or more. So our probability has got to be greater than or equal to 10. Now, step four says we're going to rewrite it using our continuity fa correction factor. Remember, that comes from this chart here. Now, we're at probability of 10. That's all right, sorry. Probability of 10 or more. So it's going to be greater than or equal to 10, which fills in right here. Kind of seems backwards to me, but basically we're going to take our probability and it's got to be greater than whatever our value was less than um, or minus 0.5. So that just works out to be 9.5. So we have x is greater than 9.5. And, and then step 5, remember this is where we find our z values. Our mean, remember our middle number is 20, so 9.5 is going to fall over here, but we want everything greater than or equal, or I'm just sorry, just greater than 9.5, so we're looking at things to the right. So to find our z-score, using our formula, we take 9.5 minus our mean of 20 and divide it by our standard deviation of 4.24, and that works out approximately, or works out to be approximately negative 2.48. Now use that z-score to find our solution. Using our standard normal distribution table, a z-score of negative 2.48 corresponds to 0 0.0066. Not just 0.66% though, because remember, we want everything to the right of that value. And when we want things to the right, we have to go 1 minus it, because the values are always given to the left. So if we do that, we get 0.9934, or 99 point three four percent so what is the probability out of 200 bowling league members that 10 or more will be widowed? 99.34%. Again, just following our steps. A couple more examples. Batting average, um, baseball players' batting average is 32%, 0.320. Find the probability the player will get at most 26 hits. Go right back to these steps. Follow these steps every single time. Step one. Our number of trials is 100. Our probability of success is 0.32. Our probability of failure then is 1 minus that, or 0.68. I 
I believe. Yep, 680. So we just multiply them together. And since we're using 100 trials here, it kind of works out pretty easy. Just 32 and n times q is going to be 68. Both of them are greater than 5. We can continue. Step 2, find the mean and standard deviation. So our mean, we basically already did that. It's n times p, which is 32. Our standard deviation then, using our formula, 100 times 0.32 times 0.68, then the square root works out to approximately 4.66. Step three, write it in the correct form. So our probability is we want at most 26 hits, at most. That means it has to be less than or equal to 26 because the most you can get is 26. Step four, we're gonna take this probability that the value is less than or equal to 26 and go to our table. If we go to our table here, remember we're using the value is less than or equal to 26, which is gonna correlate to right here, number four. And we end up with our probability is going to be less than we add 0.5 on. So, now we can take this and move that into step 5, which is where we find our z-values. Now our mean is at 32. We want the probability that it's less than 26.5, so everything to the left of that number. So to find our z-value, we use our formula. The number, the value we're working with is 26.5. Subtract our mean, which is 32, and divide by our standard deviation, which is 4.66. That works out to be approximately negative 1.18. Now using that number, if our z-score is a negative 1.18, going to our, normal, our standard normal distribution chart, that corresponds to 0.1190. Now, that's the number from the left. That's our probability up into this 26.5. That, that works. We don't have to subtract anything. So that works out to be 11.9%. So what is our probability? He's going to get at most 26 hits. Only about 11.9%, considering his average is 32% or 0 0.320. Our last example. Now remember what we've been doing with all these examples is taking binomial distributions and you, uh, actually applying the normal approximation to a binomial. So we want to kind of compare them in this one. Now it says when n equals 10 and p equals 0.5, use the binomial distribution table, table B. I believe that was a bright pink sheet I gave you. It was the table we had from the last chapter. So get that back out. It says to find the probability that x equals 6 then use the normal approximation. So when our value is 6, our number of trials is 10, and our probability is 0 0.5, if you use table B, that I think, like I said, I think it's bright pink, and actually these are backwards. Your first column is n, then 6, and then you go to cross to the p is 0.5. And if you need any help reading that chart or you need a, cop a new copy of the chart, let me know. Anyway, that, that number corresponds to 0 0.2, 0 0.205. Okay, so again, you look up your n is the far left, find 10. Then in your 10, find where x is equal to 6. And then your probability is 0.5. And I believe the n comes first. All right, now, that was it. We did it. We found the binomial distribution. Now let's use the normal approximation. This is where we go back to our steps. Step one, does it work? Well, n times p is going to be 10 times 0.5, which is 5. It just has to be greater than or equal to 5. n times q, we didn't figure out q, but if p is 0.5, so is q. They both work out to 5, so we can continue. Step two then, find our mean and standard deviation. We found our mean. 
n times p, which is 5. Our standard deviation, n times p times q, 10 times 0.5 times 0.5. Square root that, about 1.58 is our standard deviation. Step three, remember, this is where we get into writing it using probability notation. Well, we want our probability x equal to 6. Step four, now we've got to adjust it. We've got to make that correction. So we want the probability that x is equal to 6. So we're going to use number one right here. And that's where we bring it down 0.5, and where we subtract 0.5, and we add 0.5. So we're going to subtract 0.5, so 5.5 is less than x, which is less than adding 0.5 onto 6, 6.5. All right, continuing on, we're applying our normal approximation now to all of this. Our mean is 5, and basically we want 5.5 and 6.5, which is going to fall right around that mean. So since we have to add two values here, I'm going to do z1 and z2. I'm going to make z1 my 6.5. So we take the value minus the mean and divide it by our standard deviation. That works out to approximately 0.95. Z2, this time using 5.5, minus our mean, divided by our standard deviation, and that works out to approximately 0 0.32. And then step six, go to your standard normal distribution chart. Z1 at 0.95 corresponds to 0.8289. Z2 at 0.32 corresponds to 0.6255. But remember, we want the distance between these two. I shouldn't necessarily say distance, but the difference between the two. So we're going to subtract. And when you do that, that equals point, or I'll maybe say 0. 0.2034, which is pretty close to 0 0.205. That's why, again, it's not exact, all of this is approximations, but that's why when you hit this number here, you can say it's close enough, and we can use our normal approximation and apply it to our binomial distributions.